This is my second video lesson for the covalent bond unit. I split the topic of Lewis dot diagrams for covalent compounds into three separate lessons. In this lesson, we'll be starting with single bonds. In the next one, we're going to do double and triple bonds. And the third one, we're going to do polyatomic ions. So let's go to page five in the class packet. Motivation. Compare the Lewis dot diagram for ionic and covalent compound below. So take a moment to compare these two diagrams. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to draw the Lewis dot diagrams of covalent compounds with single bonds. Homework number two will be a junior pop based off this lesson. So let's compare and contrast the Lewis dot diagram. The first one is an ionic compound, NaCl. So it's typically between a metal and a non-metal. There's two ions. Sodium is positive, chlorine is negative. And it's showing a transfer of electrons and there's a bracket and a charge. CH4 is a covalent compound. Covalent compounds are typically nonmetals only. The Lewis dot diagram is showing the share of electrons and it indicates structure of the covalent molecule. In terms of similarities, they both have electron dots, element symbol, and they're both following the octet rule. Learning check number one. Given the Lewis electron dot diagram, which electrons are represented by all the dots? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So you should know that electron dots are represented by the valence electrons. And since this is covalent compounds, these valence electrons are being shared. So they're the carbon and hydrogen valence electrons. So the answer is choice three. For covalent compounds, the Lewis dot diagram indicates the structure of it. This is known as structural formula. It shows how the atoms are arranged in a compound. Think of it as like the skeleton of the compound. For example, the structure formula CH4 looks like this. In the structure formula, the central atom is usually the atom that forms the most bonds or have the smallest subscript. If you look at CH4, C has the smallest subscript. That's why it's in the center of the structure formula. These are both acceptable Lewis dot diagrams of CH4. You can draw either one on the regions. Two dots or a pair of electrons is equivalent to one bond. It is better to draw your bonds with lines than with dots because if you have a very big molecule and you draw the bonds with dots, then it gets really confusing. Sometimes not all of the valence electrons in the atom will participate in bonding. This is known as lone pair electrons. There are valence electrons that do not participate in bonding. In these Lewis dot diagrams of carbon dioxide and water, I am going to circle the lone pair electrons. The electrons that are participating in covalent bonding are represented by the lines, while the electrons that are not are just shown as dots. These are the lone pairs. They are non-bonding electrons. Let's review the octet rule. If you recall, octet rule is when atoms bond to achieve the noble gas configuration to obtain eight valence electrons in their last shell. We already discussed ionic bonding in which they transfer electrons. Now we are going to discuss covalent bonding in which there's a share of electrons. So we still got to follow the exceptions in which sulfur can be 8 or 10 or 12, phosphorus can be 8 or 10, boron can be 6, and two electrons for hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Here are some guidelines to help you draw the Lewis dot diagram for covalent compounds. Keep in mind the octet rule is the priority. That means there will be exceptions to these guidelines. But typically, the central atom is the one that forms the most bonds. So carbon forms four bonds, nitrogen forms three, oxygen forms two, and the halides and hydrogen forms one. Covalent compounds can have single, double, or triple bonds. So this is how you would draw them for Lewis dot diagram. For single, it will be one line, double will be two line, triple will be three lines. And in a single bond, you have two electrons in the bond. For double, you have four. And for triple, you have six, because each line represents two electrons. Just to review, a single bond is much longer than a double bond. A double bond is much longer than a triple bond. The reason for that is because there's an inverse relationship between the length and the strength of a bond. So the triple bond is much stronger than a double bond. Now a double bond is much stronger than a single bond. Learning trick number two, 
Which statement describes a multiple covalent bond? Pause the video and resume once you complete this. So covalent means shared, so three and four are wrong. A multiple covalent bond can be a double or triple bond. A single bond is only two electrons that are shared, so choice one is wrong, so the best answer is choice two. Learning check number three. Given the formula for hydrazine, how many pairs of electrons are shared between the two nitrogen atoms? Pause the video and resume once you complete this. So the nitrogens have one bond between them. That's two electrons or one pair. So the answer is choice one. So on the regions, pay attention to if they're asking for pairs of electrons or number of electrons. People usually get tricked because they don't read carefully. Now I'm going to show you two methods in drawing the structure formula for covalent compounds. In the first method, method A is a medium level method. So you first have to determine which element will be in the center. Since nitrogen has a small subscript, it will be in the center. Also, based off the guidelines, nitrogen forms more bonds than fluorine. Nitrogen forms three, while each fluorine forms one. Next, you draw the Lewis dot diagram of each atom of each element. So you want to place the fluorines around the center atom, which is nitrogen. Next, you count how many electrons does each atom have. Nitrogen has five, and each fluorine has seven. Now we're going to form one bond between fluorine and nitrogen. So let's count how many electrons does this fluorine have now. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, and is sharing two electrons with nitrogen. So it has eight. How many electrons does this nitrogen have? It has one, two, three, four, and is sharing two with this fluorine. So that's six. So nitrogen must keep bonding in order to fulfill the octet rule. So let's form another bond with another fluorine. So this fluorine has eight. How about nitrogen now? It has one, two, three, and is sharing one, two, three, four. So it has seven electrons now. So it still needs one more bond. So let's form it with this fluorine on top. So this fluorine on top now has eight, and this nitrogen now has one, two, and is sharing one, two, three, four, five, six. So a total of eight. Now each atom has to fill the octet rule. So now let's connect the dots of the bonding electrons. You can redraw the Lewis dot diagram for clarity to see the bonding electrons and the lone pair electrons. As you can see, this follows the guidelines. Nitrogen forms three bonds and each fluorine forms one bond. For method B is a much easier method for beginners. Just follow the four-step procedure in the packet and you'll get the answer right all the time. I recommend method B because it's a much simpler and consistent method than method A. So first, you have to count the total number of valence electrons in the molecule. So let's use the same example, NF3. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and fluorine has seven. But since we have three fluorines, seven times three is 21. So the total will be 5 plus 21, which is 26. In step 2, we must determine which element goes in the middle. Since nitrogen has a small subscript and it forms more bonds than fluorine, it goes in the middle. Next, we draw the fluorines around nitrogen. Next, we draw a line connecting each fluorine to the central atom. So each line represents a bond, which is two electrons. These electrons are shared between the atoms. So, so far, we use three lines or six electrons. In the beginning, we started with a total of 26 electrons. Since we use six, we have 20 left over to place in this Lewis dot diagram. In step three, we're now going to put six electrons on each non-central atom. So we do not do this for hydrogen because hydrogen just needs two electrons to fulfill the octet rule. These are the valence electrons of these atoms. So how many electrons did we just place? We placed six for each fluorine. So three times six is 18. So how many left over? From the previous step, we had 20. 
20 minus 18 is 2. So we still need to put two electrons somewhere in this structure formula. In step 4, you're going to place the left of electrons from step 3 onto the central atom. Since from step 3 we have two leftover electrons, we place them onto nitrogen. So now how many advanced electrons are left over? 2 minus 2 is 0. Once you reach 0, you are done drawing the Lewis dot diagram. Next, you want to double check your answers. So let's do that. So we know we start off with 26 total valence electrons. So let's count to make sure this molecule has 26. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. You can double check if each atom is fulfilling the octet rule. This fluorine has six non-bonding electrons or free lone pair and is sharing two. So this fluorine has eight. This nitrogen has three bonds. So each bond is two electrons or six electrons altogether and it has one lone pair. So this nitrogen has fulfilled the octet rule as well. Here I highlighted all the lone pair electrons in red. Nitrogen has one lone pair or two non-bonding electrons each fluorine has three lone pairs or six non-bonding electrons. So now I want you to try to do this one on your own. So pause the video and resume once you're completed. Okay, so let's go over it. In step one, we must first count the total valence electrons of NH3. Nitrogen has five and each hydrogen has one. So five plus three is eight. So which element goes in the middle? Nitrogen has the smallest subscript and it forms the most bond, so it is the central atom. You draw the hydrogens around the nitrogen. Then you draw a line connecting each hydrogen to nitrogen. So how many electrons did we use in this step? So the total number of valence electrons in the beginning was 8. We used 6 because there's 3 bonds. So 8 minus 6 is 2. So now we need to put these two electrons onto this Lewis dot diagram. In step 3, do we add the six electrons to hydrogen? The answer is no, because hydrogen just needs two electrons to fulfill the octet rule. It already has those two electrons because it has one single bond. It is already sharing two electrons with nitrogen. So in step 3, we still have two electrons left over. We got to place them onto the central atom which is nitrogen. How many left over? 2 minus 2 is 0. So we're done drawing the Lewis dot diagram. Now let's check our work. So we already know each hydrogen has fulfilled the octet rule. Now let's check the nitrogen. Nitrogen has three bonds, so that's six electrons, and it has one lone pair. So this nitrogen has fulfilled the octet rule. According to the guidelines, this is also correct because nitrogen has three bonds, and each hydrogen has one bond. Learning check number four. Given the formula for ammonia, how many electrons are shared between one NH bond? Pause the video and resume once you're done. One NH bond is a single bond, which is two electrons. So the answer is choice two. Learning check number five. Which Lewis electron dot diagram correctly represents the covalent compound H2O? Pause the video and resume once you're done. So the answer is choice four. So I'm gonna go over how to get that. You must first count the total valence electrons in H2O. O has six valence electrons and each hydrogen has one. So the total is eight. In step two, we must determine which element will be in the center. Oxygen has a small subscript and it forms more bonds than hydrogen according to the guidelines. So oxygen will be in the middle. The hydrogens will then form one bond with oxygen. So how many electrons did we use in this step? We used four. So in the beginning, we start with eight. So eight minus four is four. So now we're gonna put these four electrons somewhere onto this Lewis dot diagram. We're not gonna place it on hydrogen because hydrogen already fulfilled the octet rule. It already has two electrons. So we're going to place them onto oxygen. How many lone pair electrons do we put onto oxygen? 
we're going to put two lone pairs because two lone pairs is four electrons. So how many left over? Four minus four is zero. And now we're done. You may come across a situation in which you have only one element in your molecule. For example, F2, which is a diatomic molecule. The strategy will be to designate one of the atoms as central. It does not matter which one. Each fluorine is seven valence electrons, so two fluorines will be 14. So now I'm going to designate one of the fluorines as central. It is highlighted as red. So next we draw a line connecting two fluorines. So we used up two electrons, so we have 12 electrons left. So we're going to place six electrons onto the non-central atom. So we're going to place six onto this fluorine. 12 minus 6 is 6. We're going to place the six electrons onto the central atom, which is the red fluorine. So 6 minus 6 is 0. Now we're done. We can double check our work. So this fluorine has eight electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and is sharing two, so that's eight. Another way you can check your answer is using the guidelines. According to the guidelines, each fluorine should form one bond. Now I want you to try the other two diatomic molecules, Cl2 and H2. Pause the video and resume once you complete it. Okay, so here's the answers. For practice number one, I want you to draw the Lewis dot diagram for each covalent compound. You should be able to do 1 to 20 for the regions. From 21 on, those are challenge questions. So pause the video and resume once you're done. Okay, so here's the answers from 1 to 9. Here's the answers from 10 to 18. So from 16 to 18, there are multiple central atoms. And here's the answer from 19 to 24. Remember, boron and sulfur have exceptions to the octet rule. This boron just has 6 electrons. This sulfur has 10. And this sulfur here has 12. And here's the answers from 25 to 30. Again, you should be able to do 1 to 20 for the regions but you can do them all as long as you follow the methods and the guidelines. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipod homework.